Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 511. I'm your host, Roman Sanzo, and it's been a while. So, yeah, oh wow, what have I been doing? Oy, oy, oy. Mm. Uh, some of you may know that there weren't much news, and when they were, I was compiling them, and some of the news kind of were time sensitive, and I missed the ball. My bad. But anywho, um, let's carry on. <clears throat> In today's news, <laughs> a My Little Pony Metropolis more G5 concept art release from Jan Benetti, I think so, uh, concept artist Jan Benetti has popped up a bunch of new generation concept over on his aspiration page, everything from uns, uh, unreleased environment assets to this crazy metropolis up there are in the pile. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So, you're probably wondering why did I put this on here? Um, this is just concept art that uh, may or may not have been used. Well, to be honest, um, this one here, sorry, no, okay, this, this one here, this one here really piqued my interest because take a look at it, it's a city, uh, cityscape, uh, a metropolis, if you will, of Equestria. And we didn't really get this, we didn't really get this in G4 or even in G5, to be honest. And this is what I was hoping it will be when we went to the quote unquote future for ponies. Because, uh, like any other <coughs> city or like any other um, metropolis or whatever it is, we get to see the urban evolution and whatnot. And this is what I was hoping for ponies, uh, even in uh, G5. Like, this is what I was hoping for because it shows that the characters are evolving or upgrading and just moving forward, progressing to the future, I guess. But no, um, we didn't get this uh, at all. We just... <coughs> How do I put this? We, we just got... Um, whatever we had in the pony game and movie like we got better time bay and whatnot and yeah this this yeah. I, I don't know if i say it was disappointing it was interesting to say the least and we got a lot of uh caves and whatnot so it, it still feels like uh equestria but uh, man like this would have been that would have been so awesome if we got to see uh, what's there. Like, how do the ponies live? Or what was the society like? And, oh, judging by how the show is going, uh, whatever Twilight work on with the uh, cross-species friendship project that she was doing, it's all out the window because... Doy. But uh, just imagine, um, if you read the comics, you got things like um, Manhattan or Philadelphia and so on. So there, there's a lot of uh, what ifs that were there. Like just, just imagine if uh, what you call this. Um, just, just imagine if uh, the ponies, they live in high-rise buildings and they have dragon neighbors or even changeling neighbors or whatever it is. I mean, the scenario sets up a lot of things and the story kind of writes itself. You, you could possibly have a My Little Pony Friends where a bunch of friends just hang out at a coffee shop and just talk about their day. I mentioned before, the story writes itself. And 
if you still go with the cross species aspect, you can have a what a hippogriff, pony, um, yak. Um, I'm trying to remember stuff. The cat people, uh, the diamond dogs, and so on. I mean, you could just mix and match all those stuff, and it will be very interesting to see how <coughs> the story goes. It 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 could have been fun. And that's why we have fanfic writers and comic people to do stuff. But because of how G5 is... <laughs> Ponies now is not as been awesome as where it was before. Mm, I'm a bit sad on that one. But anywho, let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is... <clears throat> My Little Pony G4 movie added to Paramount+. Plus. Hmm... Huh. I got... Nothing to update on that one. I don't have Paramount Plus, so I got no idea. I'm just going by what um, Seth says. So, one thing I want to highlight or talk about is that when you go to Netflix, for example, or even YouTube, let's 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 trim it down to YouTube only, because YouTube is kind of well. Everything goes, more or less. Uh, so, back in the days when we were doing stuff, sorry, uh, I'll just put you there. Okay, cool. I stick and move my hand. Cool. Uh, back in the days when we were, uh, not really we, um, when the official My Little Pony YouTube channel uploaded their stuff, they put it on. YouTube so people can still check out their work and whatnot and uh, have content and so on blah 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 and that, that it was kind of fun and whatnot so you still have what you call this um, content to watch like uh, G4 stuff like struggles and so on blah 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 um, and if you even go beyond that you still got the musics like the music that were uploaded to their channel, if I remember right. I, I think music, like, uh, I think the official channel uploaded their albums there. <clears throat> so that, that was all cool and all. And if you were to do it now, especially when you go check out um, the movie soundtrack, it's not there. They took it down, like they, they, they nipped it in the butt. Like it is gone. I personally own those, what you call this, albums on iTunes. And here's the thing: when you try to find it on iTunes, it's not there. I, I don't understand. I, I, I don't know. Um. One of the few things that's going on in my head is that it could be rights issue, licensing rights, but it's Hasbro. They they made it. They, it's theirs. So what's stopping them? Themselves? And that's, that's what I don't understand because people still like the original, sorry, people still like G4's music. It's great and you have nine seasons worth of it why not just leave it up there for people to enjoy listen remix and whatnot i mean it's content i, I, I don't know. still it's, it's it still baffles me to why they did it and here here's the thing about how do i put this here, here's the thing about uh, content not being available. I have the money. I want to purchase the content or the album and whatnot, but it's not there. You don't leave it available for me, the consumer, to get it. So the alternative for me to get said soundtrack or music or whatever it is to right 
to how 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 do I say this delicately? Um. To go get it someplace else where I don't need to give money to you and save it for myself. I mean, I'm not saying and I'm not implying stuff, but if it's not there and I still want it. And here's the thing, <clears throat> here's the thing about YouTube. You can still quote unquote listen to the songs that you want from other uploaders and other users, but I want to support the official channel. I want to support the official avenue of uh, the product I want to. For ex a, a really good example for me was the My Little Pony comics. I wanted to support them. I wanted to buy their comics, but because uh, the I um, Comicsology app was. Uh, sorry, Comixology was bought by Amazon, was it? I think so. It was bought by Amazon, and the whole thing became shit. It became crap, and it became really hard to deal with. And from that point on, I didn't bought any because I couldn't. They weren't letting me buy the comics. So, what do? Like I mentioned before, go... Find some place else where you can. And some people might view me say, Norman, if you check out EQD, they post stuff like where to get the comics and whatnot, and where you can buy it and so on. That's true. But <clears throat> if you have a collection of comics in one binder, and if you're asked to go get another binder to fill it that's going to be more work on me and I kind of want it all in one place to be honest and the Comixology app was awesome for that like it did the job for me <clears throat> so if I had to get the Comixology app and then I need to get the quote-unquote My Little Pony comic app then I have two things, and if one app doesn't update, I'm screwed. I mean, there's a lot of workarounds, there's a lot of places to get it, so I'm not complaining. And as for the music, same thing, there's a lot of workarounds, there's a lot of places to get it. But the fact of the matter is, I want to support the product, but it's not available, so yeah. I have been on a tangent. God dang it. Anywho, Paramount Plus have G4 movie ponies. Yay! Awesomeness! Also, Sonic 1 and 2 is there. Did you know that Paramount Plus is going to um, also do Knuckles, the series? And Idris Elba is reprising his role? That's going to be fun, I think. That, that is going to be fun. And also, he has the hat. So, that, yay! He, he is going to be awesome. If you've got no idea what the head is about, uh, go try and f watch the classic Sonic movie. Uh, it's a 2D animation movie where uh, it shows Sonic fighting Metal Sonic and so on. And there's this cat girl thingy that's kind of into Sonic. I don't know. But um, yeah, go go check it out. It's kind of fun. Anyhow, moving on. <clears throat> oh no, Paige is out of memory. That's going to be annoying. <clears throat> <clears throat> My Little Pony G4 Pinball FX table now on Steam. Yay. Uh, if you're like me, Steam has probably got you by the cojones where it comes to where you buy PC games pinball in this case if you decided to skip the G4 pinball FX release because it was on Epic Games instead you now have another opportunity to go uh, with good old Peppa Valve wow okay uh, Mother Pony pinball is now listed up over here for 
$5.50. The Steam version doesn't look like it includes anything new, so you already own it. There isn't much, uh, there isn't much here other than having it on in your library. So, um, I remember. Yep, I remember this a while back ago when, um, we were talking about it. Um, like Seth said, it was on Epic Games, and I don't own Epic Games, so yeah, but. I do have Steam. Now that the game is on Steam, right? This is good news. Yay! Awesome for everyone. <coughs> so I did a bit of uh, look see, and how Pinball Effect works is that you get Pinball Effects the base game, and that is free. So uh, you can play normal pinball. I, I'm not 100% sure if you get tables, but from what I understand, Pinball FX, the game is free and you can buy tables for a certain amount and with the pony table, you have to pay $5.50. So what, does, uh, what that does is, uh, you get your pinball game, base pinball game, which is free, and you can put on tables on it. Uh, from what I understand, they are multiple tables from uh, your arps, from your classic pinball games like huh, Knight Rider, Baywatch. I don't know. Um, pinballs, and then uh, you can add more tables, add more stuff, and. Uh, if I remember right, there was a Game of Thrones. I'm not just certain, sure if there were other Hasbro D&D, Magic, but uh, Ponies is up there, and it's for five fifty. So, uh, I'm not 100% sure if you're wondering what I'm wondering, and the the question is, Norman, are you going to cover this in your Let's Play series? I'm thinking about it, <laughs> and <clears throat> it feels like I might, you know, I, I, I possibly might because this feels like one of those relaxing games where I can just sit down, um, talk about stuff while playing video games, or in this case, Pony Pinball. You know, I might, I might. It, it feels awesome enough. And from the screenshot we can see here, um, we have the pony table, the game, and also the background. We're in, oh man, <laughs> we're in Twilight's old um, library. Uh, we, we have the elements of harmony to the side, um, a bit here and there. I mean, this looks awesome. This looks, this looks like a fun time. So probably uh, I finished the uh, Maritime Bay game, so I guess this is up on... Next on the list, I guess. <laughs> so anywho, um, yeah, check it out there. Future, yeah, cool. Oh no, memory page. All right, <clears throat> this is, woo, this is something else. Hasbro to team up with Mattel to combine both brands for toys and games. Uh, in a startling move that probably no one expected, Hasbro will be teaming up with the other big toy giant, Mattel, to create toys and games based on both of their properties. If, if, mm, effectively, effectively sharing license on things like Barbie and Monopoly, uh, considering how much they love combining magic and Dungeons and Dragons with everything out there lately, we expect more weird Hasbro brands to pop up over there. But other companies are entirely up open with some wild possibilities. On that pony front, we could have. Okay, so this is just uh, Seth adding a bit. We will find out where this leads soon. They haven't mentioned anything specific outside of making a note that the uh, that both Transformers and Barbie will be hitting the big screen this year in a quote okay <clears throat> okay so um 
what does this mean for Hasbro? Sorry, what, what, what does this mean for us, the consumer? This means we're gonna have a lot of awesome swag. Um, how Hasbro and Mattel are going to deal with it, it's up to them, not my problem. So, one of the few things I've heard is that it's Transformers Cross Hot Wheels and the potential there has already risen up to 110% or 120% and why is that? So Hot Wheels are known for their die-cast cars which are pretty awesome and whatnot and uh, Hot Wheels collectors are really insane um, Technically, collectors are insane in general, but you get what I mean. So, just imagine that Mattel, who owns Hasbro, sorry, who owns Hot Wheels, have the licensing rights to create Hot Rod, Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, and so on, and put logos and they could not they, they could just be normal cars that don't transform or they could be cars that can transform and vice versa uh, could you just imagine uh that uh do, 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 bumblebee uh bumblebee in the movies is a cadillac i think mustang i don't know uh, uh some kind of car and them having since they're um, combining with Mattel's Hot Wheels, they have the rights to really... You know, I'm going to take it back a bit. Bumblebee. Bumblebee was a Volkswagen Beetle. So, uh, Mattel, who has Hot Wheels, have license with Volkswagen to create uh, toy cars. And Hasbro could dip in that to make Bumblebee, who is a... Beetle, uh, Volkswagen Beetle. I mean, the possibility is there, and it could be insane with what they really, or what can they can do. So, uh, that's Transformers and uh, Hot Wheels. What about ponies? Well, how how do you, um, how how do you use ponies in this um, cross brand conglomerate? So, the obvious one is. Ponies with um, Barbie, but that's too obvious. That's too obvious. There's too uh, on the nose. But po ponies with oh, man. Here, here's the thing. I I'm not a. <clears throat> I haven't really dabbled with Mattel products. In a while, so I don't really un uh, I don't really see their scope of toys, so I I can't really pick and choose who or what is the best. Huh, I could Google search it, but I'm not in the mood. Oh, uh, Monster High, sorry, uh, yeah, Monster High, yeah, WWE and ponies, did did Mattel did that? Yeah, I guess, <coughs> but. That's the thing. Um, the end. The possibility is. I won't say endless because, uh, if I do no toy, if I know toy companies right, they still have to work around their target audience, their market share, their whatever it is. Because if I know, um, they're going to capitalize on their target audience. So. Boys will always go for cars, boom boom, and transformers, big giant robots, and whatnot. So those two pairing would be logical. Ponies are a girl's product, mm. and pairing that up with Barbie will make sense. So uh, one one of the things that you can do is probably have a Barbie with a Pony in it and it sells. You can clearly tell that I don't have no idea and I can't really go beyond. <coughs> but 
let's just say um, they work with Monster High. So Equestria Girls, which I do like. It is a very awesome series. Crossover with Monster High. Idea just came in. And <clears throat> to set this up, you kind of need to, well, A, um, you, you kind of need to know the lore of Monster High, if this, um, yeah, I, I think there's some. And then um, combine it with the world of ponies. So you take one IP, you take the other IP, you smash them into some kind of uh, one-shot crossover movie and whatnot, and it'll do great. Uh, make some kind of mystery and whatnot, like um, fish out of water story. I don't know. It'll, it'll be great. It'll be awesome. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Monster High has boy characters, werewolves, and whatnot. So, something like so, so, something to that. Something to that. And here's the thing: to make toys out of them, you can have Equestria girls go to Monster High and turn them into. Monsters. What kind of monsters? I got no idea. I haven't watched the series. And you can take the Monster High girls and put them in Equestria and change them into normal looking girls. I don't know how normal works, but um, make them not have monsterish, monsterish features? I don't know. You guys work it out. But still, the Possibility are endless there, and you can do a lot of stuff. I I got no idea what the story is going to be about. I got no idea how it's going to work, but it could be awesome. And uh, talking about crossovers that don't really fit, uh, I just recently watched uh, Justice League Cross Ruby. That was. <coughs> How do I put it? That crossover didn't make sense at all. Like, what? How? Where? What? I mean, but I kind of appreciate it. I kind of like it. And, hmm, how do I put it? Hmm. There's certain aspects to story where things make sense. For example, uh, Street Fighter or the yeah Street Fighter mix in with uh, cross with the King of Fighters. How does that work? Well, uh, it's been on record to say that uh, the Street Fighter universe is in the quote unquote real world uh, with added countries or other cities like uh, Metro City and whatnot and then you have the King of Fighter universe where it's on record that they are in the real world Japan and so on so for them to cross over does make sense or to quote unquote meet with each other does make sense when the timing's right so having that there having that freedom to just mix and match with whatever you want to make awesome stuff is great um that, that's why i i'm really into crossover stuff like um things that crossover that make sense I, I i really enjoy it but one of the downsides of this is uh the licensing right the, the licensing right between uh in this case hasbro and Mattel, because once that deals over you won't be getting a reprint or a reissue of the toys. Uh, they, they'll say stuff like, Oh no, um, our uh, since the deal's over, we can't do it anymore. So, tough luck, sorry. This happens in quote-unquote Magic the Gathering, uh, honestly. Because um, next month, well, whenever this comes out, <coughs> there's going to be a Magic the Gathering crossover with Lord of the Rings. And if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, that's going to be awesome. And you're going to buy stuff, you're going to get cards, exclusive cards by the way. And they're going to be one of a, quote unquote, one of a kind. Where 
after this is done, they won't be reprinting anymore. Uh, a good example of this was the crossover between Magic the Ring and Street Fighter. That is just one print of the collection, and after that, no more, no, no, we, we won't be redoing uh, any Street Fighter crossover uh, reprint. Uh, what, we'll, what we can do is um, give you a Magic the Gathering variant of the card, so have fun, I guess, eh? So, yeah, I guess. <clears throat> but anyway, let's move on. We got a lot of news to cover this week, which I'm happy and I'm talking a lot. <clears throat> ah, yes. My Little Pony, a new generation, has been nominated for Best Sound Design by Irish Animation Awards. For those who are, sorry, for those not in the know, a lot of work on My Little Pony, a new generation, was actually done over in Ireland. The Irish Animation Award currently have the movie set in the best sound category, up against Monster High, Bardo, Memento Mori, and My Father's Dragon. You can find the page over here. No! I forgot to put links. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm guessing this is the movie, the full feature movie. Uh, judging by the. Uh, I guess it was great. Uh, the, the sound was awesome and whatnot, I guess. But I, 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 I haven't heard of some of the uh, series here, like Memento Mori. Really? What is Momento Mori again? I mean, I just saw skulls and bones. And that is badass. I, I don't know how a pony's gonna fight that. Or it could be something else. <laughs> okay, you know, I, I, let, let's see what they're really fighting up against. My father's dragon. Okay. Mmm. All right. <clears throat> okay, so animation-wise, all right, cool, cool, cool. cool. Oh, was Japanese too? Hmm. Haven't seen it really, so I I can't really say much. My what you call this? My opinion skewed to ponies, but I don't know. I I'll guess. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes, but all uh, to, to best of luck to you, My Little Pony, a new generation. Hope you guys win on best sound design. Uh, can't say much. So last one on this new cycle is hmm. <laughs> 40% of IDW media stuff lays off! Oh no! <coughs> okay, according to the Popverse, ow, <laughs> IDW media has gained a total of 80 employees in March of 2023. Today, 31 people lost their jobs. Oh no! Now, to the core of the issue. The layoff comes as a part of restructuring the company, which IDW is branding as a reset. A restructuring where the CEO and CFO were both fired along with 28 others. This is surprising. <clears throat> ah, and the company is being deleted. Okay, I've read some of it, I bet I haven't read all of it. Okay. Um, and the company is being listed from the stock exchange. This is being done in order to increase stability and long-term profitability of the company. At least that is the official stance on the matter. So what does this mean for IDW's My Little Pony comic? 
First and foremost, none of the writers, illustrators, cover artists, and colorists are losing their jobs on the comic, at least not yet. The comics industry is primarily made up of freelancers slash independent contractors. This means the creative team of the comics are not classified as employees of the company. Technically, they are another company. The comic publisher has subcontract works, uh, subcontracted works out to, such as they are not implicated by company layoffs. The other people on the creative side who are classified as employees of the comic company are the comic book editors. In IDW's case, it's the editors and letterers. IDW, sorry, Equestria Day has been able to confirm MLP editor Riley Foreman was not included in the rounds of layoffs. How the restructuring and cost-cutting measures will impact the series going forward, potentially fewer variant covers per issue would be my immediate thought. Remains to be seen. Equestria will keep up. Alright. Um... Reading through this one, um, kind of was kind of surprising that to uh, to see the chief executive officer and chief finance finance officer were both laid off along with twenty nine others. So that that was surprising because in my head, usually when we see big companies lay off staff, oh, it's to um, cut costs, blah blah blah. Ah, the people on top are safe. Ha ha ha. But no, uh, the CFO and CEO were booted. Also, the listing their uh, company out of the stock exchange also is surprising because uh, when you, when you put your company on the stock exchange, people can buy shares into the company to kind of well. Mm, be a quote unquote shareholder to get money and stuff. But when you delist it, uh, th this goes back to the idea of you having a what you call this. Uh, uh, how hard it was. Uh, if you still have stock in the company, you still have stock in the company. But if it's not available to buy more, you can't add. You can't add stick into it. So. Uh, them delisting it and just restructure it. How, how much is that? Give me a second. Me math not good. So they have 49 people working for them now. <coughs> so the, the way I'm looking at it is right now is that IDW really wants to kind of save their butts and not do a marvel. And why about, <laughs> and what do I mean by that? Uh, way back in the days, Marvel went bankrupt? Yeah, uh, if I remember right, they went bankrupt, but not to the sense of uh, we don't have a company anymore. Uh, they were restructuring and whatnot. So um, what happened was Marvel sold their rights to certain IPs to certain studios and uh, did a lot of restructuring and just make, make things survivable. And what really pushed them and boosted them was uh, the MCU, with, starting with Iron Man. That, that was a big gamble by them. But before that, you had Spider-Man who kind of, uh, quote save Marvel, I think? Uh, not 100% sure on that one, but yeah. Um, with the movies, like Spider-Man doing really well, uh, with Fantastic Four, the Ghost Rider movies, and all those movies that were not made by quote-unquote Marvel, they did well and kind of helped Marvel get back on their feet. So what I'm guessing IDW is doing is the same thing, but here's the thing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, IDW is... Uh, or IDW deals with a lot of third-party content. Uh, they usually make comics for other companies. Uh, example is Ponies. 
Uh, and then if I don't mistake, I was Transformers? Yeah, but, but back in the days, like, you had ponies, Transformers, Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe, uh, Turtles. I think so, Turtles? Sonic? I think they have, they still have Sonic. And a lot of more. So, that's how, that, that's IDW stick. But now that, uh, I think when they were negotiating for comic book, uh, rights, they only took, or they only save ponies and transformers, if I'm not mistaken. I think. So they, they only have this two from Hasbro? I'm not 100% sure about Sonic. I think they still have Sonic. But, uh, IDW or, yeah, IDW and Hasbro, yeah, that's the only two IPs that they still kept. So that's going to be interesting moving forward. <clears throat> so, like uh, the Lester's Q mentioned here, um, probably not many uh, variant covers and so on. But I, I, I wish them luck, man, because IDW comics were part of the pony fandom, uh, the pony story thing where things were mentioned, things were built, and I, I just can't wait to see what to see how things goes. So let's move on to the next topic. So next topic is what have I been doing with my week? A lot of things going on really. So um, let's break it down to fun things. Magic and D&D. Uh, can't say much about D&D. Um, had games. Stories are awesome. I'll upload the story if you're interested on my personal channel uh, for Magic. Still same thing. I've heard a lot of stuff going on. Yep. <sighs> yep. I I don't know what to say, man. Like, if you heard the news, you heard the news. Okay, so another news. It's right, another news. I watch movies. Yay. Um, a few... Okay, the big one that came out was the Super Mario Brothers movie. So how did I en uh, did I enjoy it? Was it fun? Was it great? Blah blah blah. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. it. It was fun. Um, I I watched the movie with a friend. We had a good time. Yay. And it was fun. I I I really enjoyed it. From the music to the characters and to the scenes, it's how to put it. The movie itself is a nostalgia beat movie for people who played a lot of Mario games in their youth. Looking at uh, the just looking at the characters doing their stuff is just awesome. Uh, watching Mario run with his hands outstretched, uh, jumping and twirling uh, that reminds me of playing. Um, Mario Odyssey and so on. I, I know he does that move in other games, but is it, just looking at those things kind of really was awesome. Uh, in terms of story, I, I've heard a lot of people bitch and moan, blah blah blah. I, mm, how, how about this? I knew what I was getting into and I wasn't expecting a masterpiece and whatnot. So my expectations were... Uh, how about this? My expectations were in line, or I didn't put high expectations on the movie. Uh, yeah, so it was fun, it was great awesomeness. One disappointment for me was no Rosalina, but for what we got, we, we had a pretty awesome crew. Um, Jack Black was awesome as Bowser. Chris Pratt's Mario voice was surprisingly not that bad. It was serviceable. Uh, I, I know people were kind of bitching and moaning like, well, what about, uh, what you call this one? What, what about the Charles Martinet? Like, he's still alive. Why, why didn't you cast him? And, uh, yeah, yeah. Honest answer is, they need a big star 
to play or they, they need names for movies so they can get money out of people and having Chris Pratt is kind of big because Chris Pratt is popular he has name in the movie industry he played Star Lord and also that Jurassic Park guy hmm so that's why he's there other than that eh, movie was fun I uh, can't wait to see part two and see where this th that story goes I do hope that we get a lot of other characters or more screen time with other characters like what we got was okay I wish Luigi did a lot more other than being stuck but yeah um I hope next movie we get a lot more action or you know a lot more interaction with Luigi and stuff because a lot of more stories can be told so anywho I'm gonna wrap things up let me open script it's been a while if you guys have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at gmail.com you can also reach us on the Twitter the show's Twitter account is at the BS show and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo uh, and also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also uh, Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. Talking about the show notes, uh, please subscribe to the Review Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you can catch me, Silver Quill, Jacob, probably Terra, reviewing Pony Comics, episodes, movies, specials, and sometimes we like to do other things other than ponies. Those can be anime, cartoon, comic book, manga, movies, and video games, and so on. So yeah, catch us over there for some reviews. Yay! Oh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MPS show. If you have support, you get a week early access to review, discussion, podcast, exclusive, and delete the content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank this awesome people. Uh, like a person named Jacob, Lucky Knight, Master of Black, and also Tristan. Thank you so much guys for being awesome and supporting me for this long. I, I, I'm humbled by your kindness. Thank you very much guys. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I'll catch you guys next week with another news show of how how do I do this? With another with another awesome episode of the MBS show. See ya.